it's Miriam and we're finally back to colour. I admittedly painted this piece before Inktober, it was one of my big major pieces before Inktober so I was really happy with it. I'm not going to be talking too much about it in this video because this video is about art schools versus being self-taught um, but I'll just quickly introduce it to you uh, and if you have any questions feel free to post them in the comments and I'll try and respond to them as soon as possible. So this piece is titled Ego and was painted with gouache and watercolour. It's available as a print in my shop if you guys are interested and um yeah that's all i'm gonna say about it for now feel free to ask me any questions in the comment and i'll do my best to reply anyway i have a lot to say about the topic so let's quickly jump into the video first little disclaimer though this video is sponsored by skillshare which, make, which makes me really happy because i really like them so i'll be including them in uh, my topic because i think they fit it really well so uh look out towards the end of the video for my thoughts on skillshare and a little offer that they will be uh, giving you keep an eye out for that and the links in the description below okay so a little disclaimer first um i myself am mostly self-taught although i did major in art when i was in high school and i did a one-year art foundation in london about seven years ago my knowledge of art schools comes from a little of my experiences, the research I did and also my friends and family's experience as some of them have been through four art degrees. Um, secondly, I live in the UK, I grew up in France, so I'm most familiar with the schools in those countries. From the research I have done, the basics of each school don't seem to differ much from country to country, so I'll be focusing on those elements. So that means I won't be talking about fees, scholarship, financial aids and etc because um, those are elements that differ and that I'm unfamiliar with. Thirdly, as I mentioned, this video has been sponsored by Skillshare, but they didn't choose or request this topic. I just thought it would be fitting to include them as sponsors in a video about our education. Um, I will therefore mention them in some depth, but they in no way put any words in my mouth and all my opinions about them and this topic are all my own. Okay, so first um, I will talk about art schools and art majors. I'll define each term and we'll list the pros and cons of both. And second, I will talk about what being self-taught means and entails and I'll list a number of resources that can help you in this process. So let's dive right into it. I'll go into how and why you should decide whether going to school to study art is a good idea for you a little later in this video. First, I want to talk about the different paths open to anyone who can and wants to go to study art in an academic, ac academic, I can't pronounce that word, academic environment. <laughs> so the first path is art school. Uh, these are schools that specialise in teaching artistic subjects and focus less on having liberal arts classes. So the curriculum is very art orientated and the teachers and students live and breathe art 24-7 basically. Um, and then there are university and liberal art colleges that offer art majors. So those establishments in particular will have a stronger focus on liberal arts than art schools and they tend to have a smaller art community. Both choices are very valid in their own ways and whether they suit you or not will depend a lot on your approach to art, your goals and your personality. But I mean that also applies to being self-taught. I'll put both type of establishment under the same umbrella name of art school for the sake of simplicity. They both have subtle pros and cons, but this video is going to focus on art schools versus self-taught. So I'll focus on more general pros and cons that fit both types of school. Um, in a general sense, I personally think art schools have a lot of theoretical pros. Being in an environment that was designed to focus on art will give you access to a plethora of things that are difficult to come by on one's own. Namely, um, equipment, which means that even if what you usually use is simple and easy to come by, you still have access to things that might broad broaden your taste and allow you to experiment. Second, space to make and create. Um, I know firsthand how hard it can be to find space for one's art. Expert instruction from ideally teachers that have, that have considerable experience in both art and teaching, which is not always skills that go together. Um, also, a community of students that have similar interests to you and have a similar drive, which can create an encouraging and supportive dynamic environment. And that is definitely a massive plus for art schools, in my opinion. Another plus is that both teachers and students can lead to exposure and networking opportunities. 
And uh, that community of art schools can provide you with a very useful fundamental base on which to start building a career. Um, and finally, one of the biggest pros in my eyes is time. Um, going to art school is in some way buying yourself the time to practice your craft. And time is so, so precious. And when you want to become good at something as time consuming and complex as art, it is doubly so. Um, unfortunately, all these lovely pros are all good and well, but they can be counterbalanced with quite a few cons, <laughs> like most things, I suppose. Um, but the biggest one is obviously the cost of a few years of art schools. I know our fellow Americans suffer badly from that, and I know the UK has gotten worse too. Um, I'm not against paying for good, good education in any way. I think high quality knowledge is a precious thing to find. But it feels like it is becoming increasingly hard to not rack up unbearable amounts of debts before even starting to make a, really, a living. Um, and I completely understand not wanting or being able to do that. That was one of the reasons I didn't go to university. Um, adding accommodation, food and transport to the equation and can then make the whole situation just become more of a nightmare than the brilliant opportunity it should be. Another con is that a lot of those pros aren't given. They are ideals, and ideals often don't reflect reality. My brother went to art school uh, because obviously he loved art, but he also knew that he needed a particular environment around him to thrive. An environment where he could be taught by, uh, you know, rational, highly experienced teachers, where he could meet other like-minded students and work together with them. Um, he needed the energy and synergy to thrive, to thrive in art, basically. Um, but it turned out that he found almost none of those things. The students weren't interested in working together and they had almost nothing in common. Um, and the teachers were a world mix of wonderful or uninteresting or even kind of incompetent. So all in all, it isn't terribly surprising, but um, it's also really frustrating. I know that I was expecting grand things from my foundation degree, which I did in a really reputable London art school. Um, <laughs> but I was really, really disappointed. My teachers were absolutely lovely, but I learned literally nothing that entire year. And lastly, art schools can feel really contrived because the focus is often on improving a student's technical skills, creativity can feel really limited. Um, art school is good to train oneself to be disciplined and productive and practice good time management, all really extremely important skills to work as a freelance artist. But it also means it's an environment in which the students are expected to produce work along a certain timeline and along a certain visual gu guidelines. Um, add to that, that art is really subjective in a lot of aspects and that each teacher might have very personal viewpoints points and it can quickly feel like you're working for others and not yourself anymore I'm afraid. Um, so if you're considering going to art school my main advice would be to do your research really thoroughly and by that I mean go on forums, find students and alumni and ask them questions if you can, go to the campuses and the open days, look up the curriculum and look up the teachers, try to find out as much as you possibly can and make sure to give yourself plenty of time so that your choice isn't one made from panic and lack of time. Um, I'll also list some questions near the end of the video that you can ask yourself to determine what path might best suit you, so stay tuned for that if you're interested. Um, but first let's talk about the other option, the self-taught option. Um, <laughs> it's important, I note, that I use heavy quotation marks when I use the term self-taught. And that's because I don't believe there is, nor should be, such a thing as being fully self-taught. Because you simply can't teach yourself something you know nothing about. You can attempt to do it, and you will probably have some level of success. But you quickly stagnate or become stuck with habit mistakes difficult to shake if you never refer to higher authorities on the matter you are researching. Um, therefore, I use the term self or really loosely <laughs> and as a blanket term to cover any training that wasn't received in kind of the traditional academic setting, basically. Okay, so first, the pros of being self-taught. Teaching yourself, quotation marks, uh, <laughs> has the major benefit of being able to fit your learning and practice around your own life and schedule. So it's very flexible and somewhat forgiving, which can also be a con, but <laughs> we'll get to that a bit later. Um, you can also create your own curriculum. You can focus on exactly what you feel you are lacking and exactly what you want to learn. 
And there are no marks, no exams, no risk of being stuck with unpleasant or incompetent teachers and or fellow students. No worry about adhering to the aesthetic of a particular teacher in the hopes of getting a good grade. And it's also more often than not quite a lot more cheaper than doing a degree. Um, big but though, and I suppose we'll now talk about the cons, but it really does not fit everyone. I suppose that's true for art schools too, but there are more niches to fit into in art schools than there are in teaching yourself. For one, teaching yourself is a really lonely business. You can obviously take classes, you know, like life drawing and such, and I definitely recommend doing so. You can do a couple hours or more a week of more social learning, but that in no way equates to being in a class eight hours a day, five days a week with the same people for a few years. It just doesn't. You might share the same interests and passions as some of the people in your live drawing courses two hours a week, but there is a special kind of energy that comes from sharing 50% or more of your everyday life with the same people. You share the pressure, the struggle, the doubts, the goals, the story, the everyday life. It's just different. Um, and then secondly, teaching yourself requires a great deal of determination and self-discipline, and in some ways, self-confidence and strength of character. It takes strength and will to create a schedule for yourself and stay to it. T to take the time and energy to practice things that aren't always interesting or fun. And to delve deep enough into introspection and to be able to analyse yourself critically enough that you can pick up on the mistakes you are making and work towards improving. It takes strength to keep do going even when days are hard and things aren't going smoothly and you don't feel like you're progressing and everyone feels unattainably better than you. And it feels like you'll never reach your goal. Um... Because we'll feel like that at times, like, I mean, artist or not. Um, but when you have to go to school, when you have homework and exams and others doing the same as you and teachers waiting on your work, then you have that outside push to keep going even when you don't want to. You don't have that on your own. On your own, you can make excuses, you can wriggle out of it and watch a TV show instead and push the guilt to the back of your mind for a bit longer. <laughs> when you teach yourself, you become your own, your own worst enemy. Trust me on that. And that can be really difficult to overcome. Thankfully, nowadays, there are lots of options available, which means that it's becoming easier and easier for us to come up with a system that suits us as, like, individuals. And I think a really great middle ground between art schools and being self-taught, like, <laughs> just self-taught, are online courses. There are really good ones out there, and um, the really good ones can get a bit pricey, but I've personally never found any that come in any way near the fees of university and also there's the advantage that reviews for the courses are really uh, really easy to find online a few really good quality examples of such courses are the schoolism courses the new masters academy courses or the online gnomon uh, gnomon i don't know how to pronounce this workshop courses <laughs> these are all like one thousand dollars or more but they're extremely, extremely high quality. Um, I'll put all the details in the description below, of course, so you can have all the links if you want to look any of them up. I'm genuinely hoping to learn to earn enough one day to take some myself in the future because they're, they're incredible. Um, a rank below this in time needed and price are one-off courses and subscription services. And that's where websites like Skillshare come in really, really handy. And Skillshare is a really good example because it's extremely reasonably priced. Um, it's an annual subscription of less than $10 a month. And you get unlimited access to more than 17,000 classes from like drawing to photo to design. And what I really find really handy also is marketing, um, which is super important as a skill to learn about if you're serious about living off your art. And it's really difficult to come by good information about it. Um, Skillshare is also really friendly and unpretentious, which I personally find really important because it means that it isn't intimidating and it helps it helps one feel comfortable and at ease enough. And I think that helps with productive learning, basically. Um, having full access to their courses means that you can further improve your skills, learn new ones, explore new avenues and opportunities. Um, I'm a firm believer in affordable, community-focused and analytist modes of learning like Skillshare because it helps provide anyone with a solid base and I think that having to pay a small subscription is also 
good for artists because although it isn't enough to be stressful and put you out of pocket it's still a small incentive to go back and keep learning so in my opinion i think it's a really good um good mix of both worlds basically and not only was skillshare lovely enough to sponsor this video but they also are offering the first 100 people to use the, the promo link in my description below two months free to try their services out risk-free so i'd highly recommend giving that a go you have nothing to lose and everything to gain and i promise it's worth it uh so yeah give it a try i'm hoping to maybe one day upload my own classes to skillshare i realized that they had that option and i'd love to be able to do that because i'm really enjoying kind of the whole teaching aspect of things and i think i'd love to have courses that are really affordable and kind of friendly like skillshare classes so yeah that's something i'd like to consider in the future <laughs> Um, but anyway, back to the topic. Um, in addition to online courses and subscription services, there are also a lot of resources scattered everywhere for free, such as free tutorials on YouTube, which I'm sure you're familiar with, and I have a few playlists that you can look up if you wish. Um, there's Pinterest, there's DeviantArt and Tumblr, and there's like countless websites where you can just look up, um, look up so much information. You can also join forums and Facebook groups. Um, good forums are like conceptart.org, DeviantArt, Wet Canvas, Artist Daily. I'll have a link in the description to everything I mentioned if you guys want to check them out. I think forums are a good way of creating yourself a network and a community um, and ask for cri critics and ask questions and somewhat kind of mimic a school community and environment basically. I think they're a really great tool and I should personally join more of them. <laughs> you can use Twitch uh, to chat with artists directly and uh, see real-time work, which I do quite a lot because I think it's an incredible tool. You can also find artists on Patreon uh, who offer lessons and critiques via, via their account and you can consider pledging. I've seen quite a lot of artists do that and I think when I, uh, when I create myself a Patreon I'll probably have some, some of those kinds of rewards. Um, and of course you can buy books and you can practice via things like uh, Crocky Cafe and New Masters Academy. They both offer like um, life drawing videos that you can draw along with. Um, the sheer amount of resources and opportunities out there can be a bit overwhelming sometimes. But um, with a bit of time and determination you can create yourself a really great program to evolve and reach your goals. And something that's really tailored to you and I think that's absolutely invaluable. Um, but anyway, I think I need to wrap up this video now. Um, would you guys be interested in a video about self-learning resources uh, a bit more in depth than this one? I could create playlists for different topics and recommend channels and like and stuff. So let me know in the comments if you'd think that'd be a good idea. Um, but anyway, before I leave, I want to quickly give you a small list of questions that might help with choosing which path is best for you. So first, how certain are you that you want a career as an artist? Are you unable to picture yourself doing anything else? Are you interested in a variety of subjects in equal measure? Do you just want art to stay your hobby but still want to improve and maybe perhaps in the future? Um, second, how independent are you? Are you able to push yourself to work every day or do you feel like you need to have people around you to spur you forward? Do you feel stressed and blocked when surrounded by others or do you thrive and grow better that way? Or do you need a bit of both? Are you prone to procrastinating and postponing tasks or are you proactive and productive? And thirdly, do you feel you need your work to be validated by more experienced and knowledgeable people? And do you feel that your ability to pursue being an artist will be affected by whether or not you get that validation? That is a tricky one, but it's an important question to ask yourself, I think. I'm asking myself that question constantly. Um, and finally, are you willing to work extremely hard, no matter what, and have a potentially unstable and personally demanding career that isn't only a job, but also a lifestyle? And that's something that you need to ask yourself if you're serious about having a career in art. Um, it's... it's it's important to be fully aware of what having a career in art entails, not only technically but also personally. And it's it's sometimes difficult. It's a very it's a tough it's a tough career to have. I'll be honest, but um, absolutely worth it. <laughs> anyway, I hope those questions and this video is somewhat helpful to you. Um, I leave you with these words: There is no path more worthy of pride than the other in the different paths I mentioned. 
Art is all round difficult. It's also extremely rewarding and exciting and really well worth the effort. The thing you should be proud of isn't whether you have um, taught yourself or whether you went to school. The thing you should be proud of is whether you dove deep enough into yourself to understand what you needed and optimised your environment to reach your goals in the best, most productive and most beneficial manner. If you manage to be fully honest with yourself and work hard to tailor your life to achieve your goals in the most efficient and healthiest way possible, then you will be just fine. Hold on to your goals tightly, make sure they are yours and not anyone else's expectations for you, and stay determined, proactive and focused. Things will always be hard sometimes, but being proud of yourself for keeping going is a fuel like no other, trust me. And on this note, I hope you guys enjoyed the painting. I'm sorry for not talking about it very much. Again, if you have any questions, I'll do my best to reply to them in the comments. I'm really happy with it, even though, as always, there's always bits that I want to change now. But it was my first time trying out proper dramatic lighting in a composition of my own. So, you know, there's more there's more to improve on, but I think it, it was an, an okay first effort, let's say. <laughs> um, but I hope you guys liked it too. I hope you guys enjoyed the video too. I'm sorry for being long. I, you know how I like to ramble. It's just my thing, it would appear. I hope it was vaguely insightful, vaguely helpful in some way or another. Um, take great care of yourself, guys. I'll see you very soon. Bye, everyone.